Welcome to Porn Talk with Powerful Eric. End the porn habit. Reclaim your power. Here's your host, Powerful Eric. Hello, Power People. Welcome back to Porn Talk. This is Powerful Eric. The purpose of this show is to help you end the porn habit and reclaim your power. But this is not just about breaking addictions. It's about breaking belief systems. We are bound by self-imposed and societal chains. Break the chains. Get empowered now. Today, we have with us Angela Skirtu. Angela is an ASEC certified sex therapist, speaker, and author of two books, Helping Couples Overcome Infidelity and Premarital Counseling, A Guide for Clinicians. She also runs her own podcast, The About Sex Podcast, at aboutsexpodcast.com. Welcome, Angela. Hey, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, Angela just got back from Bangkok, Thailand. Yes, I did. But... Before we talk about your trip to the sex capital of the world, uh, tell me, uh, why did you get into this? How did you get into this field? Oh, into the field? Um, Well, actually, it's an interesting story. I come from a very conservative background um, where sex just, if it was talked about, it was very shamefully talked about. um, And it was causing a lot of harm for people, actually. Instead of having a real positive sex uh, view on sexuality, they had kind of a negative view. Um, So basically, I was taught growing up, you avoid sex until your marriage. Or if you do, you get STDs, you're going to get pregnant, or you're going to die. You know, some sort of big guilt trip, right? Um, And I just saw a lot of harm uh, that that kind of mindset was causing for people uh, in different walks. Like when people would get married, they'd get married too soon, it seemed, because they they really wanted to have sex because most people really enjoy it. (laughs) It's kind of a big deal. Um, And they were just struggling. Uh, They were they would struggle later in their marriages. Actually, this was the common thing. So I had a bunch of girlfriends who waited to have sex until marriage. And then a year later, they'd all talk to me and say something along the lines of, yeah, I'm just having sex for him. I'm not getting anything out of this. This isn't very fun. And I thought to myself, well, that's a problem because yeah. you're supposed to have sex. I hear more than once in a relationship. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, um, I, I kept seeing that. And then I also saw issues with um, acceptance and inclusion of people in the LGBTQ population and um, so yeah, like I got into sex therapy because I cared about those issues and I had a lot of compassion for people who wanted to have a good sex life. And my whole job is just how do I help people have a really positive outlook on sex and enjoy each other for like the long haul? Cause you know, we live a really long life now too. <laughs> right. right. Well, we're on the same page. That's my thing too, is to, to help people. Mm-hmm. And so let's uh, segue back to your trip to Thailand. What was the highlight of your trip or Uh, Did you see any uh, sex workers while you were there? Oh, of course I did. I saw the lady boys. They were great. I actually paid one for a picture. (laughs) (laughs) So, no, they were great. I I had a lot of uh, fun. Um, I didn't see a lot of, like, actual sex workers. I saw people who did massages, but they were doing the legit massages. Now, there was at least one story when my friend was offered, like, Oh, it's funny. So I made friends with this gay guy and we were hanging out the whole time. And um, one of the ladies, when I went to the bathroom, was trying to offer him a hand job, but he thought she was playing rock, paper, scissors with him. Oh my. He's gay and he doesn't like, he didn't care. You know, he's like, oh, she's interested. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and what's funny is they thought we were boyfriend and girlfriend too. So to me, I was like, wait, so you waited until I left to go to the bathroom to offer him this? I mean, there's some little shadiness going on there. But he was like, no, no, scissors, please. Thank you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It was a great time. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, actually I uh I knew the answer to the question. I did see the the picture you posted with mm-hmm. you with the lady boys. That was awesome. Oh yeah. I, I, I pulled some uh facts from Wikipedia about Bangkok, Thailand or Thailand uh that they had legal prostitution there from thirteen fifty one all the way to seventeen sixty seven. It was legal and taxed and the state ran brothels. Uh, mm-hmm. Since 1960, prostitution in Thailand has been illegal, but uh, it's been estimated that uh, to be worth six point six point four billion a year in revenue, mm. and that's a significant part portion of their gross domestic product. Well, I just think it's interesting. Um, 
you know, sex work is such a, a difficult top co- topic of conversation for people because I think, you know, people have a lot of negative viewpoints on it. But, you know, in, in the United States, it was actually it was a common thing here, too. It's not just something that happened in Thailand. And some of what I personally think would be helpful is if it is legal, but it's uh, if it's represented. What I found for sex workers is that. Um, if they are uh, represented and they're protected, like in Vegas, for example, well, hold on, it's not Vegas, it's in Nevada, but in the state of Nevada, it is legal for prostitution and it is, um, what's the word? It's, it, there's laws to protect those people. So they have to get tested on a regular basis. They need to, um, they, uh, people's like junk is essentially examined to make sure everybody's safe. Right. Um, and there's cameras everywhere, too, to make sure that there's not dangerous things happening. And in a situation like that, is it ideal? Uh, no, but at least the the sex workers are protected and the people going to those places are protected. Whereas in situations like, I'm guessing, sex trafficking is happening in places like Thailand, or even honestly, sex trafficking is happening a lot here. In those situations, there's no legal ramifications because it's already done under the table. So it's a lot uh, more dangerous dangerous for people when it isn't legal in the country. Yeah, well, let me uh, transition to that about the uh, sex trafficking. And I, I, you know, we want to keep this light. I don't want to get into this, but uh, there is every state in the United States, there's sex trafficking going on. In St. Mm-hmm. Louis, Missouri, there's sex trafficking going on. It's, it's a huge uh, uh, problem. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is there is the healthy use of porn, but where does that that where's that porn coming from, and what what are your thoughts about? Well, I that? think when things are legalized, then it's um it's easier to to basically I'm trying to think of the word here. What's the word when they actually have like laws on? I don't know why I'm having trouble putting that. I'm not sure that thought process, but there's there's more control over things when it's legalized and um. But when when there are illegal markets, then there are spaces where people can kind of fit through the cracks. It's kind of like the whole alcohol prohibition thing. You know, alcohol was prohibited in the United States for a time and then it didn't stop people from drinking alcohol. They just moonshined in their bathrooms. Right. (laughs) Um, People are people have vices and they're going to do what they're going to do. But if it's mainstream and it's protected, that's the word I was thinking of protection. When people are protected, then you have a little more control over it and you have a little less of a black market because it's more available. I'm not saying there couldn't be a black market for alcohol, but I haven't seen much. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Whereas there is a black market for things that are legal. And the hard thing is that people have their vices, whether they like them or not, or whether society likes them or not. So going to your question about is there a healthy porn usage? Yeah, there's healthy porn usage. There's porn where the adult stars are consenting to what they're doing. Um, and some of them even really enjoy their jobs, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as far as in a relationship, uh, there can be healthy porn usage as long as there's Everybody's like aware and consenting to that in the relationship, too. So where porn usage can be somewhat problematic is when it's either taking away from the relationship in some way. So the person has their own sex life, but they they're kind of using it in lieu of a relationship with their partner. Um, But many men and many women do watch porn on a relatively regular basis, and it doesn't necessarily affect their relationship. It's when they basically have created a divide where, nope, this is just how I'm getting it, and I'm never having sex with you or never really engaging with you. Or if it's kind of being kept secret, and this is the case for any anything in a relationship, if there's something you're worried about your partner knowing, it's likely... It's likely either a behavior you probably shouldn't be engaging in or a behavior you should talk to them about. So, like, if you have that little flare in the back of your head that's like, would my partner get mad at me if this (laughs) happened? (laughs) You should probably think about it and kind of either fess up or explore the behavior. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. What has your experience been with the people that you work with? I found a stat that said they interviewed all these divorce lawyers, uh-huh. and they found in the survey at least that sixty per- they said sixty percent of the ca- cases of divorce were either uh, because of pornography or at least had a sig- significant contributing factor to the divorce. What's been the experience with your clients? Um, so I mean, I I haven't looked into that particular study, but I do know that. I try to look at um, sex in a broader scope of things. So was the porn there because they stopped having sex and the porn was just being used because they had nothing else? Um, 
it's hard to it's hard to say one thing causes another thing, but I will say that you know I mean there are unhealthy versions of porn usage, and it, like I said, going back to if it's keeping you from having a sex life, or in this I mean in some of those cases though it could be that their sex life had died a long ago, and the porn is just a part of what they're doing to cope with a sexless relationship. So I don't know if the porn specifically is what causes it. Um, I I'm sure it can be a contributing factor, but it could be a contributing factor for a lot of reasons. Right. Right, right. In uh, the mindfulness program that I'm in, that I uh, teach about, that's one of the things we always talk about is that the porn is a way of coping. Mm, mm. It's a lot of 12 step programs, for example, they focus on the uh, the problem on, you know, they count how many days you're not doing the thing. Mm -hmm. They focus on uh, they focus on the problem and rather than what's behind it. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like a Band-Aid, right? So there are a lot of ways people cope with life, right? And ideally, you don't want to just be coping. You kind of want to be living and living a fulfilled life. And I remember talking about this when you were on my podcast, right? right? It's right. it's not about the not doing. It's about what am I doing in my life that makes me really happy and feel purposeful. And it's not that porn. I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody's really feeling a lot of purpose masturbating to porn. I think it's a coping strategy or it's something to do while you're waiting to have sex with your partner, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but as far as living a fulfilled quality of life, I mean, you, you need one, you need more than one coping technique, right? Like sure. if, if it's one among many, the way the therapist kind of see it is like, okay, if porn is one, maybe not that I want these to be the only coping techniques, but if alcohol is one among many, if exercise is one among many, if self-care, like getting a massage is one among many, not necessarily the happy ending kind, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> just to be fair. Although, you know, if that's okay in your relationship, you guys do you. <laughs> but <laughs> just that, like, as long as there's multiple coping techniques, then usually it's a good thing. But anytime one thing becomes your go-to coping mechanism, then that's a problem. And going back to living a quality of life versus a coping quality of life, anytime you're just coping with life, like I really want my clients to think about, wait, okay, take a step back. Am I just coping with all of this? What, what, what do I need to do to make my life fulfilled? Does it make sense? Yeah. And that, that leads us to this the next question about uh, sex and porn addiction, what is what is the debate that is going on right now about sex addiction and porn addiction? Well, you know, it's two camps of thought, and there's some similarities to the thought, and there's some differences, okay? So where people are similar is that um, we all believe that the, the, the com combining of shame and sexuality and secrecy causes harm. We all agree with yeah, that, that like yeah. sense of like, I'm hiding this thing and I can't just be my full self. Um, so that is actually an area where that debate is on the same page. Where, where the disagreement is, is in terms of like the behaviors, is this actually an addiction or is this a coping, a poor coping technique that is being used to, um, like address something like depression or anxiety. And so what the mental health professionals that are sex therapists are saying is, no, usually this is a coping technique for some bigger diagnosis. And we want to address the deeper problem, that depression, that anxiety, that whatever the struggle is in life. Whereas the people on that sex addiction side are saying, no, this is really a behavioral addiction. It releases dopamine and, um, you know, oxytocin, which it does. There's some, re there are some chemicals released oh, when you're I having sex. Does. You're aware. I know, I know it does. Thanks for listening. If you're struggling with porn or sex addiction, then contact Eric at PowerfulEric.com. Remember, you are powerful.